No texture emulation plugins would be complete without use of tools that help us emulate the effects that are achieved by usage of high quality or vintage lenses. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to get most out of LensLab. <laughs> In this quick tutorial, I want to show you the power of LensLab. Now, granted, there isn't really anything that is similar or, or exactly in a line like LensLab available to you in DaVinci Resolve at the moment. Um, so I won't be able to compare it with an existing effect. But I am still going to just start with a standard, you know, color space transform, you know, just to see like a, what we would be normally getting. And then I'm going to go now and switch to, to my, um, you know, color pro way of working. And I'm going to focus a little bit now onto the lens lab and I want to show you what it does. Okay. So first of all, um, here I have some presets, right? V stands for vintage lenses, A stands for anamorphic lenses, S stands for spherical lenses. The first number is intensity of, you know, this effect and then the later numbers then tell you like how different effects are then being used. I'm going to go and try manually to show you step by step how these effects work so you can see really what they do. First we have is a modulation transfer function, which is a very, very interesting feature of lenses that they um, reduce the resolution or they reduce the contrast with increased resolution. So what you can do is you can basically say, okay, I want the, 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 the finest details to be like a knocked off completely, right? But then uh, what you can do is you can like build a gradual fall off, right? So you can say, well, give me like a little bit more for my, you know, 90 lines per millimeter and then give me like a little bit more for the 60 lines per millimeter. So what you end up with is this like I have to like actually really zoom in for you to be able to see, you know, how, um, you know, this is working. So you see now I'm basically going to turn it on and off. So look at the skin texture. So look at the skin texture. So what I'm really basically doing is I'm just shaving off that fine skin detail. Basically, I'm literally reducing the high frequency of the skin. So it has a wonderful effect sometimes just as a beauty effect, right? You know, working with a modulation transfer function. Why cinematographers like old lenses sometimes is just because of the effect. But there is another really crazy thing you can do with this. You can actually go in the opposite way. You could actually go and say, well, I want to increase the perceived resolution, right? So I could be able to say, no, give me now like a more detail, right? So sometimes you know, maybe you say, ah, oh, I'm a little bit out of focus. So look, I can actually increase my, my modulation transfer function. I can go in the opposite way and then help it. No, that's not really what we want. But, you know, just in case I want to show you, which is something that physically it's not possible to do with lenses. But yes, digitally, when we emulate modulation transfer function, we can do that as well. So here I just shaved off a little bit of the top frequency. So now my skin looks a little bit softer, a little bit nicer, a little bit more pleasant. All right. The next thing then we do is we have that famous lens tint. OK, why is this important? Well, it works really differently than any other control like left gamma gain or the curves or anything like that. It's not the same because the color of the lens affects the color of images differently. OK, there is no it's not the linear transform. So I can, for example, say, oh, make it warm. Look at it, like when I can make it warm or I can go and say, make it cyan. Look at it like, you know, it just kind of, you know, really helps even more or make it a little magenta, right? Or make it a little green, you know, absolutely wonderful, wonderful way to just add to your image that little bit extra tonality that is just really very hard to dial in using kind of some lip gamma gain controls or anything like that. The tint right? Really important. Here we have a distortion. Now, there is a lot of parameters hiding behind these two. What we did is we simplified the interface. We didn't want this interface, you know, to be too complicated for you. So what you have here is literally three options. You have a vintage, right? You have spherical, okay? 
or you have anamorphic okay so these are like a distortions that are usually like you know available to you as a part in or, or that happen you know when you shoot in certain type of lenses okay and then what you do is let's say i'm going to use anamorphic the the focal length of the lens is going to then allow you to to control the amount of that distortion so with let's say 77 millimeter being the lowest right and 24 millimeter being the most okay so you can basically control this this amount of of of, of these particular you know distortions like that okay and then what you can do you can always decide how much of it you want because you know be careful because these distortions are going to change geometry of your shot so you see like it changes a little bit on the out, uh, outside of the shot more and for example with anamorphic lenses and so on okay and then we have this gorgeous optical vignette again can possibly be emulated using just the standard power windows but you know again because it's so you know optical elements work slightly different it's a little bit harder to do it so you see what i do is i can just introduce a little bit of that vignette okay and then i can just you know help you know get my image a little bit more roundness okay so very very beautiful organic results we get with it you see like you know this looks very digital you see like the image you know the everything so sharp which is what we kind of you know want when we shoot but when we grade wouldn't it be nice that we can then actually go and 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 you know apply some of that gorgeous you know you know feel that we normally get from lenses and now you can now you can do it in post now you can compensate for the fact that you don't always have budget to shoot with the, like a vintage or old and anamorphic lenses and you can get a little bit closer to that beautiful look that you normally achieve you know when you're using on 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 a beautiful glass so yeah it's a it's a it's a, a brand new addition we have never had anything like this before you know so i'm really looking forward um to seeing what wonderful results you're going to be achieving by using this particular effect. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe as we will be publishing more of tutorials like this. And if you have any specific questions or you'd like to see something you haven't seen before, just please put it down in comments below.